Hey Moby Knights, welcome to another YouTube movie review with your friendly neighborhood Moby One. Before we get into it, if you enjoy this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. Uh, I would really like to push for a thousand subs this, this month, if possible. So on to um, Jurassic World Dominion. So, Jurassic World Dominion is the sequel to Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And Fallen Kingdom had set up this entire premise at the end of the film that dinosaurs are now roaming the earth. And when Dominion starts, it starts off with that premise by still showing us scenes here and there of what it's like to have a world full of dinosaurs. In our world. And with every confrontation, we learn more about this frightening new reality. How did we get here? The thing about it is, is that when the movie does this, it then immediately drops it. Because then you see now everyone is living just fine with these dinosaurs. You know, these extinct things that are around living amongst us. And throughout the film, I felt like I was watching three different movies because it introduces us to this world with these dinosaurs in it. Then it introduces completely out of left field, a subplot with a large locust. It looks like something out of the movie The Mist and how this swarm of locusts are decimating the crops in the United States, except where the farms are growing crops made or made of seeds that were from a company called Biosyn, which is now this film's big bad corporate because as you know that's the ongoing theme of Jurassic World and Jurassic Park is that the corporate environment is evil. The premise on that part with the with the locusts is that they have been actually bioengineered by Biosyn. And then the plot with the locusts has the addition of Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler, and in part also Dr. Ian Malcolm, who's working at Biosyn. They need to get DNA about these locusts because the they need to blow up the secret that Biosyn is in fact the direct responsible people for these locusts that are decimating all the crops. And they sort of touch on the fact that, you know, it's probably because they want to control the world's food supply, but <laughs> It's a line of dialogue, but it doesn't go anywhere in the film. When they eventually get to Biosyn, uh, you see that Biosyn's in the f it's effectively created another Jurassic Park because what they've done is they've been capturing dinosaurs and putting them in this enclosed uh, remote island kind of setup, which is actually not an island, it's an oasis that's situated far out in the mountains. They go about their business, you know, doing the so-called corporate espionage to go and find the DNA sample of the locust and to prove it comes from Biosyn. And then there's the other subplot where you have Chris Pratt's character and Bryce Dallas Howard. They've taken on uh, the character from Fallen Kingdom, Macy, and they've in effect adopted her to look after and keep her safe because for some reason um, there are people who want her. And then you realize later on it's because they need to unlock her genetic code because it can help them cure diseases and then she's eventually obviously taken cast, uh, taken hostage and you have Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard they need to be the adopted parents that are pulling a full-on taken and they need to go and save their daughter they go to a underground marketplace that sells dinosaurs this eventually links up to them ending up at Biosyn and linking up with you know, the original Jurassic Park characters and saving Macy as a whole. So that's effectively the summary of the film, you know? And the big bad in this film, the head of Biosyn, is played by a character named Dodgson, which is a callback, obviously, to Dodgson from the original Jurassic Park. Dodgson! Dodgson! We've got Dodgson here! As a villain, he's not a villain. He's just this guy who's there. He doesn't seem driven by his motives or his implied motives. I mean, there's a, a scene, just like a random scene. He's busy talking to Dr. 
Dr. Grant and Eddie Sattler. And then at the end of that scene, he looks at his at his uh, second in command and he asks him for food. Do you have food? Like one of my bars? Hard what? What the fuck? And then there's one or two scenes they after where he's constantly munching and you're thinking, okay, cool, this is probably has to do with something. There must be a reason behind this locust plague that he started. But that goes nowhere. Then eventually they just drop it. And when the people like Ellie Sattler and Alan Grant are busy, you know, doing the investigations within Biosyn, and he catches them, he does find out what they're doing. He finds out that Ian Malcolm has helped him. He just fires him and tells him to bug off. There's no real threat, you know. And when Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, you see, you can see, I'm not even bothered to recall their names. I could just call it up now on Google, but I'm not going to. Uh, when they come to Biosyn, the worst he does is he turns off this aerial defense system so that they can then be attacked by very large pterodactyls. He's just there and then he's not because then he's taken out. Because there's a callback, he grabs the original can of shaving cream from Jurassic Park. I don't know why he has it as a memento and I don't even know why he grabbed it. And he ends up coming up against Dilophosaurus. What's your story? Which is again a callback. So this film's got like a series of callbacks to the original Jurassic Park. There is a secondary villain from the underground market and she's the one that um, arranged the kidnapping of the Macy character and she's also a dealer on the black market with regards to dinosaurs and in this movie she's gone and acquired herself some raptors and i think this is a callback to the criticism pointed at fallen kingdom where you had the indoraptor you point a laser at a target you light the target up sorry with the laser and I, there was a lot of criticism that if you could do that, why can't you just shoot them? So in this film, she practically utilizes that system with these raptors where she lights up targets with a laser. And that causes these raptors to attack. But part of the criticism from the previous film was that if you do this, it's not very efficient. And ironically, while the film does try to show, look, it can work, it also shows it can't work because she obviously targets the heroes and plot armor besides the heroes get away. So again, if she just shot them, they'd be dead. Uh, and that's the other problem with this film. So there's a lot of dinosaurs in this movie. And a lot of new dinosaurs. And a lot of the old staples. You know, the T-Rex is there. But people are outrunning raptors as if it's the easiest thing on the planet. I remember with Jurassic Park and even Lost World. There was a sense of terror. If a raptor showed up, you're like, we and shit now. You know, once is no one cock. No, <laughs> Jurassic World Dominion, it's like a blue has a baby raptor, which is kind of violent, but almost so tameable. So now that leads me to my the observation for this film. So in Jurassic World and in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, it was established that Chris Pratt raised raptors from birth and they imprinted on him. And that blue specifically was inclined to be more controllable. Yet even midway through the first Jurassic World movie, they showed how the raptors turned on everyone. So it's 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 implied and underlined uh, that you know for you to control the raptors or any dinosaur for that matter, you need to raise them from birth. So it's trying to show that you can tame them. 
Not in this movie. In this movie, it's a Super Bowl. Chris Pratt just raises his hands and calms and stops dinosaurs. Even ones that had no contact with him up until that point. And there's a scene in the film where Macy then does it. And Ellen does it. And they succeed. So if you want to control a raptor, you just lift up your hand. So the dinosaurs are in there, but they're not particularly scary because there's no real threat in the film. It would have been a more interesting film if they continued with the whole dinosaurs are roaming the earth and what happens now. And the irony is the film ends off with this message that we should all try and coexist. But what does that have to do with the film leading up to that point? Nada. So it opens with the world has got dinosaurs. And it ends with the world's got dinosaurs, but we need to learn to coexist. So yeah, that was Jurassic World Dominion. And I give it a rating of Putsek. And as my friend Ashley would say, it's a it's a proper dumpster fire. Also, uh, I didn't waste my time saying spoiler free review because I just don't want you to watch this movie. It's not worth it. Don't watch it. Don't waste your time. If you want to watch Jurassic Park, go watch Jurassic Park. Because this film, again, tries to bank on nostalgia. But nostalgia doesn't help this film. Because when I saw the original characters, I just went, okay. Didn't feel anything. Didn't feel anything. The only, I'd say the only time I felt a little bit of something is when I went, oh, there's a Dilophosaurus here. Cool. But that was it. That was Jurassic World Dominion. Don't watch it. Make a prescription.